Hello everyone, Larry Sashwell here in the shop again. It's almost Christmas time. Well, it isn't Thanksgiving yet, but my granddaughter Libby suggested that I make a group of videos around one holiday theme. So I'm going to start with Christmas. Uh, it's a little too late for Thanksgiving and I really don't have any good ideas for Thanksgiving. But today I'm going to make a Christmas tree out of a Christmas tree. And this is my prototype. So hopefully we're going to end up with something like this. For the tools, you're going to need some kind of a saw. Some type of a saw. Chainsaw will work too. And some type of a carving device. I'm going to use my axe mainly. A spoke shave will work. A draw knife will work. And you're going to need some chisels. Either a hand chisel or ones like these. Now these tools, even a carving pocket knife will work. My tools are extremely sharp, and if you're working with sharp tools, you've got to be extremely careful. This is Dana's Christmas tree from last year. I asked her to save it for me, and this is what I'm going to be using today. This is a piece of sweet gum that blew down in the last hurricane that came through. It was a tropical storm at the time, but we lost several limbs, and this is uh, one of them. So if I make it out of this, I know it's going to split by next year. This one has a split in it, but I don't think it takes anything away from it. Let's get started. Uh, this piece really has a lot of knots in it. That's going to be quite a challenge. And it may not work, but I want to leave it a little bit long. This is going to be a really small one because of the diameter of the tree here. So the next thing is to make this a cone shape. You want to keep turning it as you hit so that it remains symmetrical and you're trying to make a cone. It smells like Christmas. So it should go without saying, as you can tell, this is a pretty sharp axe. I don't want to hold my hand down here. I'm going to way up at the top on the opposite side with all of my fingers behind it. And as it gets closer here, I'm taking smaller and smaller bites. Uh, these knots make it a little more difficult, especially when they're like this and get in the way. So I'm going to try to take this knot out. This tree can be any size you want it to be. I think I'm going to try to stop mine about right in here somewhere. So this is going to be a tall, skinny tree. So I'm pretty happy with this shape. Symmetrical all the way around. I don't have to worry about getting rid of these little chip marks. So I'm ready for the next step. So for this next step, you need to decide which chisel you're going to use. And you can make some practice cuts on a scrap. This chisel tends to really turn the chips up. This is a veining tool. It's going to make very small. This is kind of a spoon. I like this one. A little bit wider. I don't think this would, would be appropriate on this size tree. And this is even wider yet. This one I've specially ground. Normally a chisel like this would look like this with a flat end. I put this a little, given this a little bit of a round shape because I like the way it looks. I'm going to use this little piece of uh, scrap here to help me anchor this. It'll give me a solid piece to work on. But I also want to make sure I don't hit my chisel on that metal. And starting at the top, 
I'm going to make some random cuts. And these knots, of course, make it much harder. So to prevent these chips from coming all the way in, I'm just going to use a little super glue, super thin, behind each one, and that will help secure them. I'm going to give it a little turn. And start on this side. So I'm just going to keep going around this, same procedure, oh, let's take it out and see what we've got. Looks like I need a little bit more right here. I could go in between those, but sometimes the old saying, less is more. Maybe a couple more up here at the top. I think we're going to call that done. So now we can put it back in the vise and cut it off. Now I'm going to come down to the other end, cut off a little disc here. So this is the top I cut off. I'm going to come back here. I'm not going to use this one, but I think I'm going to use this. Now I need to decide what size hole I need for this. Five sixteenths will work. I have a couple of choices now. I can make this so it sits on the mantel with some others, or I could put a little eye hook in here and make it a Christmas ornament. But for this one, I'm going to have it setting on the mantel. So I'm going to drill a small, short five eighths inch hole right in the middle of this. I think I'll use this as the top. I don't want to go all the way through this, but it's not a big deal if I do. And that fits there. So we'll put that in there and give it a little dab of CA glue. Some more, more CA glue in the tree itself. It looks like this. Now, I think it needs a star. A star on this thin piece of scrap cherry, and I'll cut it out. The last one is always the trickiest. <laughs> and there it is. I like it better that way. Uh, it looks like it could use some refining. This is just sandpaper glued to a paint paddle. This star may be a little disproportional to the tree. Isn't that what Christmas is all about? The Star of Bethlehem. Well, we're almost finished. I'm going to take just a little bit of this paper clip and clip it off. And I'm going to drill a small hole right in there. And likewise in the top of the tree. 
dab of CA glue in the tree itself. And there we go. Finished product. You can make these any size. I'm going to be making a larger one out of that piece of sweet gum. Thanks for watching. Come back often.